He's the former president and publisher of the Sun Herald, and now he's on the radio. Welcome to Coast View with Ricky Matthews on Super Talk Mississippi Gulf Coast 103.1. Welcome to Coast View, the show that continues to celebrate the men and women who are making South Mississippi, coastal Mississippi, one of the most amazing places to live, work, and play in this United States. I have a really positive thing I want to share from for uh, uh, to you this morning from Stacy Waldrop. It says this. It's actually a t- Tibetan proverb. The secret of living well and longer is this: eat half, walk double, laugh triple, and love without measure. <laughs> and so we're going to get into that a little bit more. But I hope that it helps you focus on the Coast View challenge that we have, which is uh, making the next six months your best six months. Bring the best version of yourself into the post-pandemic world. I hope you're doing well with the challenge and taking each day, just a day at a time. Don't worry about it. Don't make your goals too big. Just take it one day at a time and you can achieve it. You can achieve what you want to achieve in your life. But the secret of living well and longer is eat half, walk double, laugh triple, and love without measure. We're going we're gonna to do a lot of that this morning. But before we get to our guests this morning, let me ask Kyle to come in. It's Tuesday morning. On Monday mornings, Kyle don't spend a lot of time reading or thinking about the Saints, especially after they lose. But uh, you know, you you did the uh, music. Uh, I often said that if they win, it's because the music was was well done in the Superdome. And if they lose, uh, they had a bad game plan. But uh, what's your read on the on the game, Bud? You know, missed opportunities, um, some bad progression reads, some Aaron throws that shouldn't have been thrown. I think pretty much sums it up. Yeah. Uh, really can't blame. I mean, you really hate to blame the one person, but it was the one person that didn't play well that, you know, yeah. great career. It was just, it's sad to see that last game go down. That At least we were losing instead of having it ripped from us in the last 25 seconds, like the previous two years. Well, that's a, that's a good point. I mean, four, four times in a row, the saints have lost in the playoffs. We're sort of jinxed. But it was really hard to watch Drew play badly. I mean, it just, he, you know, we'll, we'll talk to Jeff Duncan a lot more about that on Friday. We'll do a complete kind of look at the season. But I'm really interested to hear what are the conversations that are already taking place about next year? That's going to be interesting. Next year, it's going to be a totally different team just based on kind of what, you know, look at the salary cap. They're way over. Yeah. Yeah. And, I I don't think they can afford to keep too many of them. It's going to be a lot different team. Uh, Rebuilding year. I hope it isn't. (laughs) I hope we're able to build on the successes of this year, but, but we'll talk more about Drew Brees on Friday. I mean, what an amazing legacy he leaves in the city, not just in playing, but you know, as a, as an individual, as a, as a leader in the community, what an amazing dude. But anyway, I think there could have been any better person to come into that situation way back when, and carry the team yeah. like he has for so many years. What a fundamentally incredible 20 year uh, career. And then, I mean, look, he's, he's going to continue to inspire for many, many years to come because he's just in his heart. He's a leader. He's going to mean a lot to the city as he goes forward in his life. And uh, you know, he, his, his work's not done yet. He just, he's not going to be a quarterback anymore, but there's all many, there's so many things for him to accomplish yet. So um, I mentioned you look tired. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> well, Those get, late get games, the, I really like the late games because I don't have to get up at 3 30, 4 o'clock and be on the road. Yeah, but yeah. man, getting home and getting to bed around midnight when you wake up at four, that really hurts. Yeah. yeah I, I hate it, man. I hate it. But anyway, good job this this uh this year, you know, dealing with the pandemic at the dome. And uh thanks for your leadership of this of this show. You're the best producer a guy could ask for. You bet. Thank you. Thank you. You bet, man. So we're going to just turn the page now. We, we're going to have a lo- little bit of fun today. We're going to reflect on uh, 2020. We're going to look ahead to 2021. But we're going to talk to my friend Steve Azar, who's the music and cultural ambassador for the state of Mississippi. And he's, he's been called a renaissance man. You know, he's been on the st- oh. uh, show several times. <laughs> he's, he's a singer, songwriter. He's a philanthropist. He's a really good golfer. Um, he's done it all. But he's also the host of In a Mississippi Minute on Super Talk. And we'll talk really actually about some of the, some of his uh, more interesting shows throughout 2020 and what to look for 
in 2021. But anyway, good morning, Steve. How you doing, buddy? Brother Ricky, uh, I'm good. I, uh, you know, guys, it was a tough loss. I'm suffering for it still myself. It, 48 hours is not enough for me to get over the Saints losing again, so it, it hurts. I'm in, yeah, I'm, in a, I'm in a little bit of agony. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so uh, there, we've got Saints fans in Greenville. That's what you're telling me. Well, I mean, we grew up going. You know, my mom went to college at Loy uh, at uh, Loyola. No, no, where'd she go? Where she went? I think. No, she went to Loyola. My brother went yeah. to Tulane Med School. Brother-in-law yeah. to Tulane Med School. But uh, but we our trips were always to New Orleans. I mean, we went to games. Uh, a lot of games. We went. I mean, New Orleans was sort of our. You know, it was, it's always been my team. So uh, it's it it hurts. You know, that's all I can say. But that actually, I, I didn't realize that part, but it, it really yeah. kind of explains why during some of your conversations, especially with singer songwriters, you reflect on the New Orleans news uh, 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 music scene pretty regularly. Love and it. You Love seem to be so aware of that. Well, uh, I mean, I, I, that's, that was a, a lot of my, my beginnings were listening to, you know, down the streets of, uh, down in the quarter. Um, you can't help but be, you know, just influenced by it and just taken and uh still to this day jazz is my favorite form of music it's what i it's what's playing in the other rooms right now we got 13 sets of speakers in our house all in different rooms and we pump jazz in the morning and in the afternoon when we're done uh it's part part of my ritual and my wife's ritual we love it oh that sounds that sounds so cool hey you heard that thing i read and i saw you smile when i read it but the secret of living well and longer is is eat half walk double Laugh triple and love without measure. You, you related to that, didn't you? Eat, eat, uh, go to 11 on a scale of 10 to eat. What'd you say? No. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, no, I love that. That's a great, that's a good way of just laying it out. But I started smiling because, uh, on one of my shows this year. And in fact, when I started writing some notes down, we we're talking about in a Mississippi minute. Uh, I, had, I always call Gary Valentine every once in a while. He's one of my dearest friends, a great comedian. Uh, King of Queens, all the mall cop, here comes the booms, all those Fargo, all this stuff. Incredible actor, uh, but he's one of my dearest friends, and I call him just so I can laugh. Yeah. You know? Uh, you know that's, see, that's, that's so important. You know, I think the pandemic, you know, I think disaster did, did this for coastal Mississippians, but the pandemic did it for the world. is an opportunity for us all to reflect about what in, what in life is really important. A, a, another friend of mine shared something that I thought was really super important. And uh, it was actually, it's a book shared uh, with her by Angel Myers McElrath, who's a DA for Jackson, Georgia and uh, Greene County. And uh, Angel had a daughter die of a just terrible brain disease. And she's very reflective and very positive, I might add, you know, she's really helped a lot of people in that community sort of, you know, be able to take the next step after, after a devastating loss like that. But what, what, one of the, one of the uh, statements in this book said, we pay tribute to God by paying attention. And I think what happens is we, we go through life so fast. I mean, you know, the, the, the noise of our lives, uh, especially now with, you know, political situation being what it is, there's so much noise, man. I think people just need to learn to take a step back and just take a deep breath and appreciate the things that are around them, just paying attention. You know, I think it's, it's interesting because when I was reflecting on that this morning as it, as it related to you, I wondered actually, because you've written so many songs over the years, you know, a thousand, I don't know how many songs you've written. Um, do you see yourself as sort of a philosopher? Well, I don't know about that, but I, I do know that sort of, I'm a victim of, of wanting to write about songs that, that actually uh, can impact and, and move the emotion of people. Uh, first of all, it's got to move me. And uh, yeah, I go, I've always written from some heavy situations, even though I, I see a silver lining of hope. Uh, but I, it is what draws me to write in the first place. Um, I do use a lot of metaphors in my own way. I try to stay away from every cliche there ever was. Uh, and uh, I just let it come out naturally. But I would definitely say that I, I gear myself toward songs that have a true purpose and meaning or, or why write them. And I can be guilty of that. Sometimes it's, I need to loosen up a little bit. You know what I mean? And <laughs> I, I can get guilty of not loosening up a little bit. So I, I, I am drawn to writing for that purpose. It, 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 it fulfills me. It, it fixes me. So yeah. you know, that's part of the, part of the, the therapy for myself. I have a friend of mine that I, uh, that I've, you know, just dearly love. Uh, her name is Stacy Waldrop. And 
I quote her on the show almost every day. I mean, she shares positive things. She's a school nurse in the pandemic, and then and she's wow. been a nurse for a long time. She's a cancer survivor. And so when she posts something, it's coming from deep inside her heart and her soul. And, and she, it's just she's very positive. Here's something else she, she posted that I thought, again, it sort of applies to you because you, you're, you're, your friend network is like un, unlike anything I've ever seen before. And you're wanting to give back to the community is so important. Hey, we're coming to the end of this segment. I don't want to rob uh, this quote. So why don't we do this? When we come back, I'm going to read to you one more quote that she, that she shared, actually from Martin Luther King Jr. And, uh, and we'll reflect about it a bit. Um, cool. This is Steve Azar, the uh, music and cultural ambassador for the state of Mississippi, a singer-songwriter. And we're just going to continue our conversation when we come back from the break. Listen live or on demand and watch episodes of Coast View on your laptop, desktop, or on your phone or tablet by going to supertalkmsgulfcoast.com. 106.3 Casino Radio is here. Tune to 106.3 to discover all of our must-see attractions and everything that's happening at our 12 incredible casino resorts. Where to eat, where to stay, what to do, and where to play. 106.3 Casino Radio has you covered with everything you need to know to help make your visit here to the coast one you'll never forget. Turn on 106.3 Casino Radio or listen now on our website, CasinoRadio1063.com. Feeling down? Here's your prescription for a daily dose of good news and positive vibes. Good Things with Rebecca Turner. Every afternoon, Rebecca highlights all the good things happening right here in the state you call home. Daily exposure to good things with Rebecca Turner may cause smiling, feelings of positivity, happiness, and even laughter. When you experience these symptoms, tell your friends to listen. Okay. Weekdays starting at 2 p.m. here on Super Talk Mississippi and now on Amazon Alexa devices. Hey, I'm Steve Azar, and you never know who or what you'll hear when I spend a Mississippi Minute with my friends. We are with the fabulous Norbert Putnam as he played on so many hit records, you can't count them, and produced for some of the biggest acts ever. We got to talk Jimmy Buffett. One day at breakfast, he says, I started a new song. So it's about a night and a day in, in Key West. I played a bar and I got drunk and coming home, I stepped out of my flip-flop and I just kept going. I stepped on a beer can. And <laughs> next morning I'm up and I'm hungover and I'm trying to make a margarita. I got some shrimp boiling. I can't find the salt. I said, Jimmy, I kind of like this. And he said, yeah, I think I'll call it Margaritaville. In a Mississippi minute. Be sure to check out In a Mississippi Minute with me, Steve Azar, right here on your local Super Talk Mississippi station and now on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher. The Lars Larson Show. On the left, they say that this president has divided America. No, the opposition, the resistance to Donald Trump is what has divided America because Donald Trump said he would work with both sides and he's shown that he would. But the Democrats, because they want to take a position that everything about Donald Trump is wrong, to a large extent, they have refused to work with him on anything. The Lars Larson Show, weeknights at 6 on Super Talk Mississippi. If Alexa's part of your life, you've got one more way to access Super Talk. Super Talk Mississippi is now available on Amazon Alexa devices. Once enabled, just say Alexa Play Super Talk Mississippi at any time and start listening. It's that easy. Just one more way to stay informed and connected with your state. Learn more at supertalk.fm slash Alexa. Super Talk Mississippi. Super Talk Mississippi. Now available on Amazon Alexa devices. Talking to the people that help make the coast such a unique place to live. This is Coast View with Ricky Matthews on Super Talk Mississippi Gulf Coast 103.1. Welcome back to Coast View. We have Steve Azar with us this morning. He's the music and cultural ambassador for the state of Mississippi. He's the host of In a Mississippi Minute. He's a singer-songwriter. 
He's a philanthropist. And then I added today, he's also a philosopher, as you'll continue to see as we get into this this morning. But I was going to share, Steve, this quote that Stacy shared from Martin Luther King. And it's, it's simple, but it's, it's so powerful. It says this, life's most persistent and nagging question is, what are you doing for others? Life's most persistent and nagging question is, what are you doing for others? Um, you think a lot about that, don't you? Well, I, I was I was really bad at it. You know, um, I would I was always moved by take. It, it was it's all about time. When do you decide that you have the time? And well, this is the way I used to look at it. Or I'm not I'm not worthy. I, my name's not big enough. I can't do enough. I was always looking for this place. And then my wife one day just said, Steve, you have got to start like really focusing on your time. It was Gwen, you know. That's when we d- created the Steve Azar Saints Sea of Foundation. That's when we started doing. And once you do that, you're obligated. Man, you can't stop. And I know I drive people crazy when it comes to going to ask for funds, but I know where the money's going. I know how it's helping. Uh, I know who depends on it. Uh, I know the arts need it down here in the Delta and, and in Mississippi. And uh, so moving back, it was a really big help to really be able to focus in on, you know, you know, past friends, man, they, they, that you grew up with or you got to know and, and the ones you grew up with, they feel an extra obligation to, to join. And they obviously understand a sense of community like you do there on the coast uh, and you do in your show. Um, it's, uh, so I think that it's important to realize that you better make the time to give and and so uh, maybe maybe there's never a perfect there's never a perfect time to decide to have a family. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> you right. think you're going to wait on the, <laughs> your economical situation to be perfect mm-hmm. and all that. You know, some things you just got to just jump in all in and do. And uh, it's been a blessing to be a part of that. But it takes a big team around you, great support and a lot of energy to pull off uh, events like the Delta Soul and. And I love to do tenny. You know, I go around the country. Jim McMahon just sent me a text asking me to come do his event for the war. He's big about our soldiers and our wounded, man. He just doesn't have events for them. He is with them. He ha- yeah. They all have his cell phone number. I mean, he is all in. So uh, I got the Grant Fear event coming up. We got the Caddyshack with the Murray Brothers. Every, all these things raise money for a lot of wonderful causes. Well, it, it makes a big difference. And, uh, you know, one of the things I mentioned off the air, I've talked a lot, a lot about this on my show recently, and that is that Matthew McConaughey, who lives in Austin, is, um, is now the Minister of Culture for the city of Austin. Come on. And he, yeah, so he does all these movies, and he's got all this fame and money, but he thinks his real legacy, first of all, is going to be a great father. That, he thinks that's his best legacy, but that there has to be something more to his contributions. And he's, you know, he's a very thoughtful guy, right. really, really thoughtful guy. Right. And he's thought a lot about Houston, about Austin uh, um, growing so rapidly and people coming in from the outside and who don't necessarily understand the attributes that made Austin this great community to begin with. Yeah. And one of the things that he's really focused on is capturing the, the these attributes. You know, they could be, you know, values and the cultural norms that make Austin such a special place that actually is in danger of getting lost and capture and then do a marketing campaign back to the community for those who are in the community. So th- those who may take these things for granted and those who are new to the area to say, you know, this is, this is, you know, you don't, don't try to make us the place that you came from that, that you left and that we don't want to be that we want to be yes. Austin. And the, the other point that he makes is that it's these things that bind us together these are the things that bind us together. These, these are, we're, if we're looking on political dimensions as the opportunity to find our, our middle ground, we're going to lose before we even get started. That the opportunity really is to set that political stuff aside for a second and think about the values that brought us together. Think about that. That's where we can find our middle ground. That's where we can, that we can find people of all races and different political points of view coming together. I mean, in right. some ways that defines Mississippi, doesn't it? Well, as a music and culture ambassador, which to me, I love it when you say it more than anything. That's the one thing. And uh, Governor Reeves knows it and C. Ray knows it and Mike McGreevy and John Roosevelt, the NBA. They all know my passion for this role. Uh, it's, it's very important to me because you just said it. I want to be partly responsible, even this much, 
uh, and a voice for making sure that we do hold on to the cultures and our history that made us who we are. I understand our farmers. I grew up with them. You know what I mean? And they, the ones that said they'll never be farmers, right? Uh, you know, the, the great song my buddy Mark Allen Springer wrote, hard times are real. There's dusty fields wherever you go. But you might change your mind because the weeds are high where corn don't grow, right? <laughs> and so and so the, they all came back and they're all farmers and all that. But um, But just the history of the music, all of our music, all this great form and all our art in general, the potters, uh, the poets, the writers, the novelists. The, I mean, I, will, I love that because we want to bring people to us when they come visit, that they get this incredible experience uh, and, and they leave and go, oh, my gosh, the state of Mississippi, the Muppets grew up eight miles from me. I'm Leon, eight miles. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like I can't get over that. When you go to Russia or you go to Germany or you go to England, they go the Muppets, you know, B.B. King, Elvis Presley. The list goes on and on. And uh, so, yeah, man, I get it. And I'm glad he's doing that because uh, and, and I'm, I'm really appreciative for my role because I feel like nobody can do it like me because nobody cares as much. Like, I really care <laughs> about that. Yeah. And I didn't want to come home and just be and be I'm coming home and it's going to lay here. Um, and I've learned so much from from our uh, the government side of things and and how important it is to bring people into our state and celebrate these things. So I'm blessed, man, and uh, and I, I love the team. I love everybody. This this I'm you know music loves everybody. You know, it, it, it and uh, so I, I'd like to be a buffer for all of that when I can, like you do. You know, you're, so you we've talked about this. So um, I'm blessed and I love my role and I get it. So- so one of the, what, what Matthew McConaughey believes is that this, this notion of finding the things that bind us together as a community, the things that makes a specific community so special is, is once, once you sort of understand that, 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 that concept of getting to the core of a community is actually transportable anywhere in the world. Right. And that that's anywhere what we need. In the world. We right. need to be talking more about those things he points out and he's given a tremendous amount of thought to it. And it applies, I think, in this in this politically divided moment, it applies so well as a as a great reminder to us that if we define ourselves on political dimensions, which a lot of our friends do these days, unfortunately, they're caught yeah. up in all these conspiracy theories and all this stuff that's out there. And and a, a friend of mine said the other day, said, "Man, you know, why don't this is a conversation with one friend? Why don't you just unfriend some of these people?" And then, of course, another friend says, man, don't unfriend them. They need they need a dose of the patience of Job, which he says I have, which I wonder sometimes. But the, but the point is that they need a dose of reasonableness. You know, right. someone who's got a rational point of view about this. That's not I, caught on the, you know, the radical dimensions. And I don't sense. know where we you know, how we've gotten to this point. Um, yeah. You know, you know, it's important that we respect our governor and, and our and our people in office and our senators, and our president. You just got to you have to respect them and hope that they're going to do the best for us because they're trying. So, mm-hmm. I, you know, I, I mean, you know, and I always look at the first thing, you know, where are they in their faith? You know what I mean? That's the first thing, because yeah. that that's yeah. compassion that that invokes compassion and human mankind of all types, because that's who you are. And, you know, you know, we've had it before with our governors and we got it now. And I'm I'm excited about that because I love seeing his tweets about you know it's Sunday. You know, I'm gonna yeah. love my I'm gonna love God and I love my family and we got to trust in that. We want to we want to carry these load these loads that are so heavy on us at times. And then we've got it just seems that the far far left and the far far right they're they're just yelling so much. And yeah. there, there's the rest of us, which is about ninety percent, ninety five point maybe ninety nine percent of us that are just quieter. <laughs> And yeah, no, I, you know, I really believe, I really believe that the majority of Americans are somewhere near the middle. They may yes. define themselves as a Democrat or Republican, but they, they really are somewhere in the middle. I think a lot of people, frankly, they don't know what a Democrat stands for today, or they don't necessarily know exactly what a Democrat stands for. They know what they stand for. I think they have right. a feeling for what they stand for. And if you were to really pin them down, they may be even somewhat confused about some of the things that they stand for. I mean, the thing is, there's a lot of confusion that sits around this. And unfortunately, the political ends, the far right and the far left, def- tend to define 
sort of you know where the country is supposed to be why most of us yeah. are sitting right here in the middle saying whoa 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 yeah. slow down man this is not that doesn't represent me you bring up a point there in the music business real quick they say that a song that doesn't invoke emotion that just lives in the middle doesn't really impact sales back in the day you've got to really tick somebody off <laughs> and so that's sort of how i feel about it anyway i know we got to go i think break. you're right i mean the, the the political situation has become when it comes to the sure. news yeah, yeah 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 and social media has added yeah, to it uh, and it's, yeah. it's super complicated hey when we come back we're going to talk about uh, in a Mississippi Minute and some of the high points along the way last year. We've, we'll see you at this break with Steve Azar. Broadcasting safe and sound from the coastal Mississippi studios, this is Coast View View with Ricky Matthews on Super Talk 103.1. 106.3 Casino Radio is here. Tune to 106.3 to discover all of our must-see attractions and everything that's happening at our 12 incredible casino resorts. Where to eat, where to stay, what to do, and where to play. 106.3 Casino Radio has you covered with everything you need to know to help make your visit here to the coast one you'll never forget. Turn on 106.3 Casino Radio or listen now on our website, CasinoRadio1063.com. Hey, I'm Steve Azar, and you never know who or what you'll hear when I spend a Mississippi Minute with my friends. We're talking to Del Barra. Take me back to growing up and what it was like in the household with a dad like Yogi Berra. You know, we grew up with his funny sayings. You know, I remember dad managing the mess, and me, Larry, and Timmy are watching the game on TV, and all of a sudden... Two streakers run out of the stands on TV and the camera flips away from them. So when he gets home, me, Larry, and Timmy say, hey, Dad, those streakers, what were they, boys or girls? We need to know. And Dad looked us right in the eye and said, I couldn't tell. They had bags over their heads. (laughs) In a Mississippi minute. Be sure to check out In a Mississippi Minute with me, Steve Azar, right here on Super Talk Mississippi, the Super Talk Mississippi app, and now available on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher. The Lars Larson Show. On the left, they say that this president has divided America. No, the opposition, the resistance to Donald Trump is what has divided America. Because Donald Trump said he would work with both sides, and he's shown that he would. But the Democrats, because they want to take a position that everything about Donald Trump is wrong, to a large extent, they have refused to work with him on anything. The Lars Larson Show, weeknights at 6 on Super Talk Mississippi. Perhaps you know a nurse, a physician, or someone who works at a hospital. We're working around the clock to keep you, your family, and our community safe and healthy. But we need your help. Wash your hands, maintain social distance, and most importantly, wear a cloth face mask. When you wear a mask, you're protecting your friends, your neighbors, your loved ones, and yourself. Science and evidence must shape our actions. Wear a mask. When the pandemic hit, New York City was told to stay home. But some homes hurt. That's why when New York City stopped, we didn't. Safe Horizon is here for you, with you, through it all. Their shelters are still open. Staff are working tirelessly on the front lines of the pandemic to keep people safer. Because when home is where the harm is, safety is essential. If Alexa's part of your life, you've got one more way to access Super Talk. Super Talk Mississippi is now available on Amazon Alexa devices. Once enabled, just say Alexa Play Super Talk Mississippi at any time and start listening. It's that easy. Just one more way to stay informed and connected with your state. Learn more at supertalk.fm slash Alexa. Super Talk Mississippi. Super Talk Mississippi. Now available on Amazon Alexa devices. He's the former president and publisher of the Sun Herald, and now he's on the radio. Welcome to Coast View with Ricky Matthews on Super Talk Mississippi Gulf Coast 103.1. 
Welcome back to Cushy. We have Steve Azar, singer-songwriter Steve Azar, the music and cultural ambassador for the state of Mississippi. And I, Steve, I can't help but think about Paul Gallo. I think when he, when you're on his show, or when I'm on his show, he'll say, "My uh, my brother in broadcasting." That's the way he, I think he, he say, calls it. You know, that's a big compliment. <laughs> you know, yeah, brother, because he's, he's so darn good at. Surprised he doesn't say stepbrother of a stepbrother of stepbrother <laughs> broadcast. Yeah. Uh, of course, of course. But you know, man, aren't we privileged to have this opportunity through our shows, you and then a Mississippi Minute and me through Coast U to, you know, you, by the way, you, you, you interview this like wide range of people. I mean, they could be rock, singer, songwriters, golfers, athlete, athlete, you know, athletes, you know, Olympians. I mean, you've done it all. And I, I do the same thing, but it's, it's very coastal Mississippi driven, celebrating the coast, the people who are, part of coastal Mississippi. What's interesting in any conversation you have, you always have a chance to sort of reflect on Mississippi values, no matter where that person is from. That's a privilege, isn't it? Man, I, when I, when people see me in Michigan or they see me on the, in Maine or New York city or Detroit or uh, Portland, Oregon or Seattle or Texas, wherever they see me, I, I bring them such a dose of Mississippi and who I am musically I talk about my home. I've always done that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's important, man. I just, it, it's, the, it's the only way that I can be real. I mean, it's, it's just so, I, I'm so blessed to have been from here. And trust me, there's nothing more beautiful than seeing that sunrise on that Gulf Coast. I've been there. I've seen it, you know, and, uh, and I've felt it. <laughs> you know, you feel it, you know. So, and then being down here in the Delta and going to the river right, to a certain point over by the bridge and watching the sun set, it's insane. You know, it's just well, and everything in between. The song you wrote, Mississippi Minute, life goes by so fast that if you blink, you'll miss it. But in a Mississippi Minute, you can take your sweet time. That's that's a great line, man. You know, I I wrote a lot of this stuff when I was in Nashville. And uh, and it's so funny because I'm going like, it's almost like I wrote myself home, you you know, before I did it. It's like a lot. I've got this song, Greenville, that I wrote back in 19, uh, I'd say 99, maybe 2000. I wrote myself right back home, Indianola, all these off this My Mississippi Reunion record. And then some of the new stuff I've written, uh, it, I just wrote myself back to Mississippi. I didn't realize it, you know, uh, yeah. but, but it is a great thing. Yeah. And uh, it is. And it is funny. We're the opposite of a New York minute. And sometimes I have to realize, slow down, Steve. Stop talking <laughs> fast. You know, well, you know we talked about th- you know, speaking of new music, we talked about this a little bit on the last show, but I enjoyed your in, in a Mississippi Minute with Cedric Burnside. Oh, he, he, you, you and Cedric, you know, I, I can, I'm in cold water. The, that just gets you in your head. But the way your voice is sort of, I, I, I look for more projects between the two of you guys. What, well, a, what a special hoping, collaboration. We're do it. And actually, him and Jerika Singleton, I think if I, we could put our, all of us together, it'd be a really cool record. Jerika's obviously a great basketball player from Mississippi. They got hurt, had NBA uh, potential. Uh, but he's like the Robert Cray of Mississippi, I feel like. I mean, he's just really amazing. Six big old six, four or five presents. But to interview both those guys from their perspectives, it all came from faith. All their, yeah. all their world, you know. Um, also, uh, you were talking about shows. I just recently had Trent Demas on, who was the tallest gymnast to ever win a gold medal. He grew tall, you know. He's my, you know, he's five eleven, you know. So he's not like he's five foot two, a guy, you know, flipping around. And he, he, uh, and the horizontal high bars. We had a four part episode on the Russian doping, how they've been disciplined and how they've been less disciplined, why they were it was so important and how they got away with it for so many years. And then the Nasser deal, the tragedy um, with the gymnasts and the is the uh, the 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 Romanian the the difference now versus uh, the Olympic trials the uh, Carioli the Cariolis the uh, oh yeah the, right the Romanian I mean yeah. it's insane how you know he's a winner but like he would say Trent would say that when he was hugging he was always hugging them you know when they if something happened and he would basically tell them like awful things while he was smiling for the camera because yeah. if they messed up, you're going to end up having to do this. And, but he's smiling for the camera. Yeah. yeah. I mean, to hear Trent tell me all this, I was like, Oh my gosh. So I walk out of my studio and, and my wife, when she just goes, I go, you won't believe this. She goes, you say this every time you walk out of the studio, but it's I'm being so enlightened and educated 
it, I can't help it. I just, it's just, you know, when Jim McMahon recently with the CTE, he was talking about looking and being in dark rooms and looking at the ceiling and how he's been, he's being fixed on a three month basis, how the doctor and, and, uh, and the spinal fluid that makes him have the headaches, it releases for three months at a time. And I mean, how he's happy now and, uh, and fighting this whole depression that a lot of football players have gone through, you know, that we've even lost to suicide. So yeah. to, to hear his take on it, because he's such a big advocate of, of it, right? A big voice uh, of, of what, you know, of that whole head trauma thing, man. Pretty interesting. And he's got a, I try to remember what his book, uh, what was it? The something Mac. I'm trying to remember the name of the he's book. He's got a new, he's got a new documentary coming out. It's not out yet called Mad Mac. Mad Mac. That's right. It'll be out probably, I bet six months. It sounds like he just doesn't have an exact date. What a, what an interesting thing. You actually did. He did a music video with you, uh, on a Christmas video, actually. Catfish Christmas and the, it, with Cat Cora and myself and him. And he put the Santa headband on. He was great. And that, that I had the Monday night football game in Green Bay uh, to do the anthem. So that's, that was Saturday. Cat Cora made us a great meal afterwards. We got on my tour bus. We went to Chicago. It's the funniest thing. I go into his kitchen and it overlooks this glass, big glass gymnasium where he would play basketball and all that. But on the table was a kiosk of sunglasses that spun that instead of having a flower arrangement, right? Jim McMahon had the glasses. Well, and I, it was just so fitting, you know, but it was the first game in nine years that he had been to an NFL game. And when he, when I walked in the stadium in Green Bay to do the anthem, it was like Mick Jagger showing up to do a concert. It was like the wave, the crowd sees him and all of a sudden they erupted. Cause you know, Mac transcended football. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, oh you, yeah, you talk about that. And also, Jimmy Mack was, uh, he played, he won a Super Bowl behind, you know, behind Brett. And, and then the other, that reminds me of Brett Favre, when Brett and I talked, because that whole year in 96, this was, well, it started in 96, Brett and I made a record together for the NFL. We were paired together. Became friends. I spent just about every other weekend home games up there. Was at the championship game against Carolina with him and his family and Herb and Benita and Scott and, and Jeff and everybody. And, and, uh, and I just, Fell in love with Brett, but the the bottom line is, uh, uh, Brett was uh, we on his show when we, we, when when I when I had him on my show, he talked about growing up, and we never really got off of that. So I never knew the young Brett Favre, and it was yeah. so exciting to hear how his relationship with his dad, how he only passed for 150 yards his senior year because they didn't throw the ball, you know, all yeah. these things, and how he became this guy. Um, that was just waiting to bud and become one of the greatest quarterbacks in history. And um, just anyway, it was so interesting to get to it know. Was, it was, it was a great, I, I loved that session with Brett Favre. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. I couldn't help but remember at Southern Miss when he was playing, you know, wow. we, we used to say amongst ourselves that, man, if he could ever actually find a professional athlete who can catch his ball because <laughs> he was throwing so hard, he's going to be unbelievable. I mean, of course, yeah. he broke all these records, but still, Broke you know, a lot of fingers. Uh, yeah. yeah, he broke a lot of fingers. All, exactly. all those guys in Lambo, you'd never, you'd see different tape on different fingers every time you came. Well, what was it, yeah, actually he talked about this scale? What was it? Uh, the finger breaking? How many fingers uh -huh. he's broke? I mean, you know, I I remember that being part of the conversation. Hey, you know, one of the sessions I enjoyed was your session with Jason Young, your friend. Uh, the, you know, you're I guess your sidekick for what thirty years now? Thirty years? You talk about laughter. So you talk about you laugh triple, right? That was Jason for me. My whole life, I have spent laughing. He absorbs things, and he can. He's a great imitator of things, especially with entertainment and funny funniness. But he is a very articulate guy that's funny as all get out. So yes, I've I've laughed for twenty five years now with him. And uh, well, I enjoyed it because there's something in the water documentary. You get to know him better obviously through that show and and the yeah. role that he plays in your life but to really kind of dive into it you learn a lot about jason and the friendship that you and he have but you also learn a lot about you because y'all y'all tell a lot of funny stories like, I'm, like i get you know, too serious my problem like, is well I'm i mean I, I love the way he talked about your packing you know <laughs> it, that, that yeah. you, you didn't know how to pack <laughs> yeah he taught me how to roll everything well i would run, <laughs> I, i'd come in with a lot of suitcases you know come on man i mean i'm you know i'm I got to be lean and mean and be on stage. I'm supposed to be pretty, right? You know? And then he's like, what is your problem? What is this big bag of stuff you're carrying? 
what, what is, what are these, what are they? And I never was a makeup guy. So, so everybody can say what they want, but you can watch my videos. I was going to get that stuff away from me. <laughs> uh, second of all, because uh, a lot of the guys in our business, they put caked it on. And I was like, what are they doing? You know, like, but I did have a lot of hair product. I got a lot of hair under here. I know you do. You got a great head of hair, but actually one of the, I remember when he said that, uh, yeah, he looked in your bag once, and I think I remember this right. There was a trombone. No, no, he was just making fun. That I, here's a trombone. I might. I don't play the trombone, but I, maybe I'll need it sometime in the future. <laughs> what a great line! Listen, uh, this is uh, Steve Azar. We're going to continue our terrific conversation about some of the highlights of In a Mississippi Minute when we come back after this. View on Super Talk 103.1 is brought to you by J. Allen Toyota on I 10 exit 38 Gulfport. See all the incredible inventory at allentoyota.com. And remember, when you think Toyota, think J. Allen Toyota. Thousands of Bulldog fans have subscribed to the Thunder and Lightning podcast. Have you? On each episode, Brian Haydad and Joel Coleman give you an inside look at your Mississippi State Bulldogs. The Thunder and Lightning podcast is free and available on demand at supertalk.fm and on your smartphone. Just search for Thunder and Lightning on iTunes, Google Play, or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Thunder and Lightning from Supertalk Mississippi, covering the Bulldogs like no one else. The Lars Larson Show. On the left, they say that this president has divided America. No, the opposition, the resistance to Donald Trump is what has divided America. Because Donald Trump said he would work with both sides, and he's shown that he would. But the Democrats, because they want to take a position that everything about Donald Trump is wrong, to a large extent, they have refused to work with him on anything. The Lars Larson Show, weeknights at 6 on Super Talk Mississippi. Hey, I'm Steve Azar, and you never know who or what you'll hear when I spend a Mississippi Minute with my friends. We are with the fabulous Norbert Putnam as he played on so many hit records, you can't count them, and produced for some of the biggest acts ever. Uh, Norbert, Elvis. And I want to tell you about Presley. He had two different voices. He would sit and talk to me in a very calm, low voice. And we were at Stacks one night, and we were having lunch. We always had lunch at midnight because... He was nocturnal. We sat there and we have our sandwiches, and at one o'clock, he looked up. He said, hey, Pot, come on, it's time for me to go be home. And he stood up, and a much deeper voice, he put on his macho voice. Hey, fellas, oh, it's one o'clock. <laughs> Let's get cracking, okay? In a Mississippi Minute. Be sure to check out In a Mississippi Minute with me, Steve Azar, right here on Super Talk Mississippi. Amazon Alexa, and now on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher. 106.3 Casino Radio is here. Tune to 106.3 to discover all of our must-see attractions and everything that's happening at our 12 incredible casino resorts. Where to eat, where to stay, what to do, and where to play. 106.3 Casino Radio has you covered with everything you need to know to help make your visit here to the coast one you'll never forget. Turn on 106.3 Casino Radio. Or listen now on our website, CasinoRadio1063.com. What would happen if, if I had to pick up the phone, call 911 for one of my family members or one of my neighbors? What would I do if, if no one was on the other end to respond? What if there was no 911? So you can be a part of the solution. Anybody can be a firefighter. Male, female, younger, older. We are school teachers. We are leaders in business is me, you, anyone that wants to be. There is no typical firefighter. Super Talk Mississippi, your new home for the Ben Shapiro Show. We don't hold back. We never shy away from telling you the truth. The most electrifying national talk show on air today. We have the most important guests and the biggest thinkers in America. Ben Shapiro, brutally breaking down the issues of the day. From politics to pop culture, we take a look at all of it. So don't miss out. Weeknights at 9. For something new and unique in talk radio, take a listen to the Ben Shapiro Show. On Super Talk Mississippi. 
When you listen to Super Talk Mississippi, you become part of a statewide community, a community of knowledgeable, engaged, enlightened, well-informed, hardworking men and women just like you, all eager to see the Magnolia State grow and prosper. There may be some disagreement on how to get there, but the goal remains the same, for each Mississippian to reach their American dream. Thanks for listening and being a part of the conversation on Super Talk Mississippi. Talking to the people that help make the coast such a unique place to live. This is Coast View with Ricky Matthews on Super Talk Mississippi Gulf Coast 103.1. Welcome back to Coast View. We have Steve Azar with us this morning, and we're just doing some reminiscing and having a little bit of fun, a few laughs. They have some serious moments along the way as well. He's a host of In a Mississippi Minute. He's a singer-songwriter. He loves this state like I love this state, and it's just fun kind of catching up. In fact, I have to tell you, man, when you came down for cruising the coast and you and I had the honor of co-hosting the JT show, that was a lot of fun, wasn't it? I just loved it, and I, I, you taught me a lot, and I loved having your, organi- your organization skills help me get Cammy prepared for me <laughs> in Cleveland when I did it without you. But I have C Ray. I have C Ray by my side, which is always comforting. Uh, yeah. But but yeah, uh, you taught me a lot that day about how just to organize yourself in that situation. I'd I'd never done a four hour, you know, three a three hour show interviewing a lot of people. Now it was good. I knew like you knew a lot of the people on the coast. I knew everybody like you did in Cleveland, so it made it a little simpler. But I, I mean, JT and we always JT is in our prayers every day, and uh, I'm thinking about him today, but. Uh, the the bottom line is wh- how he does what he does and Paul does what they do. It's really it's rem- remarkable but for that it long a period. You know, uh, you know they're having to literally get to know people on their show, yeah. which is which is impressive. Yeah, it it really is. You know, that was only my second live remote, but I had to be organized because if 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 you have a technical issue in a live show, yeah. you really had really need to know where you're where you're where you're headed. Right, and right. I don't I don't like to be half cocked. But um, hey, so what stands out? If you go back to last year, what's the single you know conversation that you had that just literally sticks out big time for you? I want to go back to the Muscle Shows day, so it's even beyond a year. But it's Norbert Putnam because I had David Briggs played on my entire record with the Kingsmen, and he yeah. was one of those Muscle Shows guys. With- yeah, he's a he's a piano organist. Yeah. Uh, played yeah. with Elvis Presley. A thousand yeah. number one records he's played on. But, yeah. but and both of them are characters. It's interesting. They're the two funny. I mean, they're so funny. And witty and full of life, but Norbert Norbert going into detail about getting the call from Jimmy Buffett about the create the the moment Margaritaville was inspired. So you think about Margaritaville; it just didn't become a song; it became a a movement, and it's it's his, it's his everything, his whole being. So. You know, he talks about he stepped on a pop, you know, he had some shrimp on the ball. And, you know, he goes through the song. He, he goes, he goes J- Jimmy, I love it. And then, of course, he says, uh, Jimmy goes, yeah, I think I'm going to call it Margaritaville. You know, and it's 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 what my commercial when they advertise my show, they still run that one blur. Will does, you know, because <laughs> it sort of exemplifies a lot of where where people are going to what they're going to get with my show. But uh, man, what a story. Right. Yeah, well, see, but it goes to this point. What's so cool about your show is that you get a sense of what's happening, what was happening behind the scenes. Uh, there's always these people that uh, we know the, the famous person is here, but there are these people who are either permanently part of their lives or who come in and, and then move out of their lives. And you get a chance to see that, you know, what, it, what are those moments? And, and in some cases, you're actually talking to the people who are the people like Putnam, for example. Uh, or Briggs, for example, that were there at just pinnacle moments for these like really well known, I mean, historic musical figures, and they're they're part of the the reason yeah. they were successful, aren't they? Uh, it, you're exactly right. They're a big part of that, and also just getting their, my old songwriter pals. We never talked about. We never took the time. We were in there writing together, or whatever. I never took the time to ask. You know, what was it like where they grew up? You know, where where did that moment happen when music happened? And to hear all their stories, there's a lot of common threads that got us there, but there's there they all have their own story to tell, and it's just so interesting. So, like you and I talked about this show, our shows are we have to listen, and there's there's a power in listening, 
that I've yeah. never understood mm-hmm. because I've always been the guy that, oh, you have an interview, you have your interview, you have an interview, and they're asking me questions, me questions, me. And it's so much re- more rewarding to ask the questions. And it, you know, go ahead. It can be difficult at times. Yeah. You know? What, what I, what my sister, Mitzi, who, who, you know, just a terrific sister. And she said, you know, what amazes me about, she did, you know, she listens to the show. She said, what amazes me is how much you have to listen to the other person. And, but I get so engaged. I literally get so engaged. And, you know, uh, uh, Kim said this and, and others said this, that, you know, it's a lot like just sitting at the dinner table with someone and having a good dinner conversation and, and you're just inviting other people into the conversation. Well, I'm getting to have dinner conversations with people. I would not normally get to have a dinner conversation. That's exactly, with, right. You know? that, that, that's exactly right. That's what it is. And I think people are endeared to that. And uh, I know, I know I love listening to your show and uh, it's, it's uh, every bit, you know, I don't need to tell you enough, but I love your show. I love it. Yeah. And, uh, and it's, it's very interesting and it's, uh, like you, you just feel like you're always, there's a lot of passion behind it. Uh, you can feel your show. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're not, you're not yeah. just going through some motion and Kim, Kim and Steve and Will, they're not going to let us, they're not going to have anybody on the show that aren't going to feel like. No. So we, uh, uh, we, you know, on the air, you know, they're, that's their airways. So you yeah, can't fake it. it, buddy. You can't, can't fake it. it. Now, so people may not like our personalities. They might not like right. our voice. What? They may not like, what? you know what I'm saying? Right, come on. But the reality, but the reality is you can't fake a love for what you do. You can't fake the passion for wanting to make a difference. You really, I mean, you, th- I mean, you can, you can try, but the listener will literally pick up on it in 10 seconds. And when you and I reflected a second ago about this Martin Luther King Jr. quote, life's most important and persistent nagging question is what are you doing for others? As we contemplate that and we try to deliver on that every day, if we didn't give it everything we've got, people wouldn't pay attention to anything we had to say. You're exactly right. You're, I, I think that that's something that uh, that you always have to really put in the forefront of your mind. Uh, and you know, what can you what can you do for others? That's a really really great statement. I don't think I've ever heard it said like that. You know, today you've just laid it out right there. Just it should be on your it should be on the wall when you wake up. You know what I mean? That should be the yeah. first thing you see. Uh, so that's a, that's really that's us. Well, that's when people come prophetic. to your show, Steve, when people come to your show or they come to mine, I want I don't want them to leave our shows. And I know you don't want them to leave your show feeling like they're more tense. <laughs> you know, I want the, I want them to leave the show saying, "Wow, that that was that was fun. That was interesting. I learned a little something that I might be able to apply today to improve yeah. my life, or maybe improve the life of someone else." And and you know, if if they even just had that contemplation for just a second, yeah. as far as I'm concerned, we achieved our goal. You know, you're exactly right, and you can tell when it loosens up. There's a point in the conversation when they really start getting to go and you go, you go, okay, they're in to what this conversation table, table talk conversation. It's now you're on the front porch and you're rolling or in the backyard or whatever. Uh, also, I didn't get a chance to interview Charlie Pride and I was about to, it was, it was something on my plate. I just never thought there was going to be an end. Yeah. So anyway, I, I, that's a regret that I'm going to have forever. Yeah, I I get that. There there are a couple of people on the coast that I, that I didn't get to before they passed away, and uh, man, it's tough. It's tough. I mean, you can't get to everybody, and there's so much to learn from these people, and probably Pride in, in particular. But you, there was this recent you know honoring of him. So we're yeah. getting to the end of our time together. It's been a always genuine fun. pleasure, like it always is, Steve. Uh, keep up the great work within a Mississippi Minute, and keep Thank inspiring you. people. Thank you, pal. You're the best. I love you, pal. Okay, man, you're the the best. I love you too, buddy. Take care and have a great day. Kyle, later, buddy. Take care, buddy. (laughs) Broadcasting safe and sound from the coastal Mississippi studios, this is Coast View View. with Ricky Matthews on Super Talk 103.1.